Hey guys, welcome back. So Kirby, question for you. If someone or a couple is making a combined income of $150,000 a year, how much should they allocate towards a mortgage? All right, I must take a small step back here. Um, if they make 150000 a year, because I already know how the comments going to come. Oh, $150,000 in California is nothing. $150,000 in New York is nothing. $150,000 in Arkansas, you could buy a mansion, you know? This is my mindset, and I'm 100% of this mindset. Live where you can afford to live comfortably. Especially in today's day and age where it's uh, remote work. You know, a lot of people are not even going into the office and things like that. You have the world at your fingertips. And I tell people this all the time, and I know... It's the emotional side of it is, oh, but my family this, my family that. But if you got $150,000 income and you live in L.A. or you live in San Francisco, you're going to be living in a cardboard box and paying about a million dollars for that cardboard box. When you can, if you're a remote worker, you can go move to somewhere in the South and with a hundred, with paying $2,000 a month, you can get, you know, 2,500, 3,000 square foot home. Now with all the extra money you got, if you just want to see family and you want to be around friends every now and then, then you can afford to get on a plane to go fly and see them. But for the life of me, I don't understand why people want to maximize or be house, house poor and then want to be around all the amenities but then because all the money that they're spending in debt for houses and cars, they can't even go to the amenities that's around where they live. So just on a just let's just say in a normal environment where house prices are not high, not low, let's just use middle America. Uh, but if I got one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month, that's I mean, one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year that comes out to what, about 10, 11 about twelve thousand a month, I want to say, mm -hmm. right? About twelve thousand dollars a month. Me, I'm on a mantra. All the expenses, all of the expenses. That mean mortgage, insurance, property taxes, PMI, lights, gas, phone, water, all the utilities. Everything it takes to live should be no more than twenty five percent of your income. And then I know people are gonna be like, "Oh, this guy's, this guy's on drugs. He's talking crazy. I can't do that where I live." Again, it goes back to the first statement I said at the beginning. Go somewhere where you can afford to live in that realm. Because this is what's going to happen. The emotional the emotional detachment of an area, because you're close to family, it sounds good. But when times get hard because you're extended, the mortgage company ain't going to hear, oh, well, well, you can't evict me because... I'm close to the family. Love and emotion don't pay the bills. So I'd rather you be comfortable, have a place that you have your family safe, secure. You got that. And, and if you still want to go be around family, then go be around them. Hell, fly them out to where you at. But you have the money to do it. But it makes no sense to make $150,000 a year. Your bills and everything come, your bills and your cost of living comes up to $140,000 a year. Now you got to go credit card hunting and credit card shopping to go on trips or go even to the local pubs and then you just putting yourself more immensely in debt so but that's my answer long story short is 25 percent of your living expenses should go towards housing yeah the 25 percent rule it's definitely uh commonly known amongst like dave ramsey and um you know other financial uh youtubers and stuff and it's a good rule. The only thing in this case, though, is like $150,000 is not a small salary. So let's say $37,500 a year, which is a quarter, could be allocated towards a mortgage. That's like over $3,000 a month. So like my only question would be, why do you have to go to $3,000 a month? Why can't you bring it lower? Because you could still find a comfortable home for less. And so, like, I don't think people should think, okay, my salary is this. Let me find, like, let's say someone is making 200000 They shouldn't be like, okay, let me find, you know, 
a fifty thousand dollar a year house that i have to pay for and, and a mortgage because like if you can find a more comfortable if you could find a comfortable spot for less then i think you should just go for that like find the bigger bang for your buck basically um and that and especially in that case because you never know if you're going to be able to sustain that income if your job lays you off if you're unable to work or something unless you have income coming from other sources but that's probably not common right what well, the thing the thing most like you're right a lot of uh you know the financial experts or whatever that you see on social media they believe in the 25% rule but they believe in the 25% rule just for the mortgage I believe in 25% rule for everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything wrapped in is 25%. So you got 75% to do everything else. So you have the money. That's the, that's the problem with most people is they go get a pre-approval and they get pre-approved for $400,000. That don't mean you got to go buy a $400,000 house. Yeah. They get approved for $700,000. No, you can get a pre-approval for four hundred dollars and still go buy a $250,000 house. It's... That's just the max amount that you're allowed. But people usually always go to the max. And then what they do is, and this is a crazy thing, they will have a, a you know, area or a house in mind, and then they get pre-approved for 400000 They give it to their uh, real estate agent. And then the real estate agent only show them houses that at the top end of that list. I remember when we moved, when we moved here to Florida, uh, my wife, she was the one that was here. I was in another country. And then my wife said she didn't want to spend more than $150,000 for a house. I mean, I know people now saying $150,000 for a house. Where's that at? Yeah, this was coming out of the financial crisis back uh 2012, 13, one of those years. And so we hired a real estate agent. And then we kept telling her like, well, my wife was telling her like, I only want to spend $150,000. I only want to spend $150,000. So the real estate agent was like, wait, you got 150000 in cash? My wife was like, yeah, I only want to spend 150000 The real estate agent turned from a real estate agent to a financial coach. She's like, well, do you know about the value of money? You know how you can leverage your money? Then she started taking her to four and $500,000 homes. And was like, and then my wife was like, wait, you don't get it. No, that's all I want to spend is $150,000. And then... So the real estate agent didn't get it. And then I went online and did my thing. And then I found a guy that was selling the house for $200,000. And then we, after some negotiation, we got it down to one thirty two five. So I still didn't even go to the $150,000 max. But, and then I called the real estate agent and said, hey, uh, if you just do the paperwork, I'll give you 1% of the commission on the work that I did. But I didn't know the paperwork and the nuance of it back then. So that's how I did it. But just because you have the money, that don't mean you have to go spending crazy. And then now look at it. All the money that we saved by not going to get the four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar house, we use that to leverage to go buy real estate. We leverage that to go buy more investments. We leverage that to go buy businesses because we don't have that monthly mortgage payment. Now that's money, just the mortgage payment alone fully funds Roth IRAs. Just because we don't have car payments. That can fully fund a Roth IRA, five hundred dollars. Well, now because it's seven thousand dollars a year, so about five eighty-two a month will fully fund your Roth IRA for the year. That just by not having a car payment, and then so you still have to spend money and everything else, and then it just compounds on itself. But that's that's the the mindset, and people don't understand the game. The world is out here to get you. If you got the money, they're gonna come take it. So don't give them the damn money yep with all that being said guys if you like the video hit the like button share your comments down below we're interested to hear what you have to say uh, don't forget to sh uh, share the video and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one